Hi, this is Leroy. Welcome back to the second part of Smash Captain on Bike. If you haven't seen the first part, go watch it. I did have some troubles with the audio. I'm still uh, learning Sony Vegas, so hopefully most of my future videos will have the same, uh, well, the better volume. But sorry about that. So I'm just going to continue with the louder volume. You might have to turn down a bit if it's too loud. It's just, it's better to be too loud and then people can turn it down than too quiet and people can't hear you when you turn it up all the way. So you can see me here, I'm just uh, magnetizing the backpack the same as the uh, in the first part of the, um, the series. It, this is a, not a necessary step, it's more if you want to remove the backpack and put a regular backpack on later and use it as just a regular uh, sergeant for the bike squad, which I might do at some point if I'm running just three, um, the three marines. or Because I, I kind of need a second squad to have three and the sergeant. Alright, after I magnetized the backpack, I started to sort out the shield that was gonna be placed on top of the backpack. Um, but first I needed to clean it up and remove the skeleton. Now I wanted to be super careful when removing the skeleton because I wanted to use that on the front of the bike so it could be like still taking his buddy along for the ride. Um, so yeah, you want, you want to clip off the skeleton on the front of the shield very carefully and then combine it with the the other half of the skeleton on the sprue and then green stuff it onto the front of the bike. Now before I start green stuffing uh, the shield and the skeleton on, I make sure to clean them up. The cleaning the shield is particularly hard because there's a lot of like stuff just sticking out and I will, I'm going to be covering that up later with the green stuff, a bit of cloth. Um, but yeah, the, the important part is to get the shield as smooth as possible and looking like it doesn't have anything on. If I had a blade guard shield, this might be a bit easier, but I still kind of wanted the symbols from the, the captain on the shield underneath. So this actually works out better in the long, way, uh, long run and also I don't waste the blade guard shield. Um, and there's, there, I think there's more, there's more captains out there than there is actual blade guard because they're in the uh, elite and command editions as opposed to just the Indominus set. For the hardest part of the shield um, is cutting the, the hand where he's holding the shield with his left hand. You want to shave that hand off completely and there'll be a few bits where it, you need may, may need to fill in with green stuff and level it out and then you need to go back and follow the line on the shield with like i, I was using a um dentist tools to uh, get that fine line so it's it's kind of obvious if you look up close but from a distance you really can't see where the hand was before so that this is a super important part because it actually stands out and it's right on top of the model but if you get it somewhat decent, it look, looks just like a little bit like a battle damage section. It looks like a dent instead of a, like just a missing hole where the hand used to be. I took a small bit of green stuff and attempted it to fit it to the shield. But then I immediately realized there's a, there was a um, slightly bigger piece to my left that was like the perfect size. And it had already been stretched in such a way that it looked like a piece of cloth. So I just ended up using that and it happened to fit perfectly. Sometimes it works out like that. Now getting uh, green stuff cloth right is all about getting the creases in the right spot that it looks like it's a flowing material. The important part is to make sure you pinch it where you want it to sort of connect to where it's attached to the shield. So I think I did like two points where it was connecting to the symbol and pinched it up into like almost a triangle, but not quite, but it's kind of smoothed out. Um, but yeah, it worked out pretty good. Now, I didn't really have any cloth references except for the flag on the Primaris Ancient from the Duck Imperium. This worked out uh, better actually because it you kind of get the same scale with the cloth on the sh uh, fl like flags on other models, and it's a bit more closer to that 40k art style as opposed to just trying to emulate a real flag or something. And what I mean by that is their cloth looks, it's slightly thicker than what an actual um, cloth flag would look like. After the square of uh, green stuff is down, you want to start adding ripples to it, um, creating like a gravity going down. 
and making sure that the the ripples follow the backpack going down after all the ripples are done you want to go along the edge and um, sort of create like a straightened edge of the flag just it doesn't have to be perfect just make sure it looks like a little bit um, squared off like it was a, a cut piece of cloth or it was originally cut to be square shaped and at the bottom I did a little bit of rippling and not ri not rippling um, ripping to kind of look like a, it's a torn and frayed um, bottom to the flag remember to just keep going back over and fixing up uh, anywhere where the ripples look a bit odd and just you can do it like a couple of passes like three or four layers of uh, rippling like you move from like the bigger ripples and then move down to smaller ripples and it should look more natural the more you work the green stuff and the better you overwork it it you can't really overwork it too much but uh, it, it just ends up looking better the more time you put into it and the more you refer to your reference piece which is um for me was the ancient it ended up looking a lot better than I'm I actually expected. seeing a super cut of this uh, video because it took me probably like three hours to do all this green stuff and yeah I did spend a lot of time on this shield getting it perfect um, as you can see here I'm using both uh, like two tools um, from the dentist set that I bought online for like 10 bucks um, to really kind of emphasize those uh, te rips and tears at the bottom of the the shield there. Uh, at the bottom of the flag I also made sure to ripple the flag and have them come off like have that flag come away from the shield just a little bit so I forced the uh, the flat tool underneath to kind of create like a wave at the bottom and then I made that I went back and made sure the ripples matched the wave um, that I was creating at the bottom of the flag area. I think it ended up looking uh, much better. Um, I've zoomed in here because um, I, I need to remember in future videos I will zoom in a lot more or rather you, uh, move the webcam closer. If I was using a better camera I might be able to look through the viewfinder and actually uh, um, do this properly but uh, just for now this is um, some practice. I, I do want to get a lot better at making videos in future. Um, if you made it this far on the video, uh, remember to, you know, do all the bash all the buttons down below. It really helps out and keeps you motivated to make more content like this. And if you find it useful, um, just leave a comment down below so I can know. And what I need to improve in my videos, uh, leave, leave feedback. It doesn't really matter. I, I kind of know what I need to improve. I just need to spend the time and effort to really push the quality of my videos up. And also if you would like to support my content, you can follow me on Twitch as well. Uh, I do uh, accept donations over there um, and yeah, I'll probably end up setting up Patreon at some point, but for now it's mostly Twitch. For the final part of the green stuff, I just, I got Adrax to use as a reference and he's got like three little, um, flickers of flame on his uh, greaves. I just sort of tried to copy that a little bit. Um, it didn't look too great, but it's possible. So yeah, um, I did spend, uh, I didn't spend as much time on the flames as I did on the flag. So that's probably why it doesn't look as good, but it took me a few attempts. Uh, the best way to do it was to get like a few small bits of green stuff, um, kind of twizzle them into like just some um, long bits like sausages and then just flatten them on directly onto the flat panel on the side of the bike and just uh, work them until they look sufficiently like wavy and yeah and I, maybe uh, three or four um, like little wisps of flame either side was um, perfect for the last bit of detailing I ended up uh, plastic gluing the two halves of the skeleton together and then I had to f I realized I had to fill the back of his head in with a bit of green stuff and ended up creating a bed of green stuff for the skeleton to lie on on top of the bike to get it to fit right uh, and then I ended up 
adding more super glue like super glue on top of that to really mix it in and make it um, stick and not fall off after adding a dab of super glue I used tweezers to place the skeleton on top of the model and position it correctly on the skeleton he's wearing like a, a parchment um, around his pelvis so there's a bit that's hanging down that covers his junk I had to cut that off and create a new piece of green stuff uh, out of green stuff and hang it down between the legs and in between the two uh, bolt guns on the front of the bike to cover that um, that gap there when creating conversions there's always spots that you have to fill or have to come back later and add a little bit more green stuff so I keep saying oh this is one one more bit of uh, detailing but th there's a bit more green stuff to go on the basing but on the model this is the last piece the only piece that was missing from the model was the head so I just grabbed the unhelmeted head from the Invictus battlesuit set and then I'll add a pin to that uh, later now for the final stage before painting is to build up the base I started by getting uh, some chip board, or not chip board, um, cork board. Everyone uses cork board. Uh, I think they stack it, like people don't really use it that effectively. They just grab it and stack it. You don't really want to stack it. Um, what I did was used it to create a ramp. So I ended up shaving it down um, and creating uh, like a wedge of it and then covering most of it with green stuff the main reason you want to cover the cork board with green stuff is to get it to look like smooth sediment rock instead of just chunky bits of a uh, cork board which don't actually look like rock that much depending on the rock type maybe but not for the desert i was using i only left a little bit of it exposed and the parts that were exposed i ended up covering in super glue to kind of harden it up uh the way i did this base I could do a whole complete video just on basing, but for now I'm just going to keep it simple and just you kind of give you the gist of it. Once I was happy with how much of a ramp I had built up, I ended up just clipping the pegs off the underside of the bike and then there was still the tiniest bit, like maybe half a millimeter of the peg left over from uh, where I'd clipped it and I used that to push into the green stuff to hold it um, when I go to paint it I'll probably end up adding two more pins to each wheel to really reinforce it on the final part of the base I just spent a while texturing the side and adding green stuff to the side of the ramp to cover up as much as the cork as possible that wasn't going to be um, covered up with super glue and ended up just uh, yeah, trying to finish it as much and just getting it as smooth and looking like there's ridges and bits of sedimentary rock and yeah like i said it's gonna it would i can do a whole new a whole video on just the uh, base so i'm gonna leave it here um thanks for watching i'll see you in part three where i will be painting this um hopefully it shouldn't take me oh, more than 10 hours if i'm filming it it, it might take longer it might be a few more days so yeah, um, stay tuned for that one. Thanks guys, see ya.